Today, I'll be presenting to you about approaches to real-time analytics for cybersecurity. This topic is very close to my heart. I've been active as a consultant and expert in the field of cybersecurity analytics for the past seven years at Deloitte, SAS Institute, and most recently through my own firm, SARC7. I've also been an active researcher for the past decade on the topic of cybersecurity data science. I'll be defending my dissertation at Nijenrode University in the Netherlands in December, and my book will be coming out published via Springer in 2021. So today's presentation will be deriving insights from both my professional work and my academic research. Today, I'll give you an overview of some of the challenges associated with real-time analytics for cybersecurity. I'll also give you a perspective on key solutions, and I'll be orienting these solutions towards three major areas from the management of information systems discipline, which is to address the technical process or methodological and organizational aspects of real-time solutions for cybersecurity. So to get started, I'd like to give a brief overview of the domain of cybersecurity analytics. First of all, I don't think we need to spend much time to recognize that there's a great amount of fear, uncertainty, and doubt concerning how we can protect the proliferating internet infrastructure that is dominating the modern world. One thing we can say is that the traditional paradigm of cybersecurity, which is a castle and moat protection uh, approach, is increasingly obsolete, which is that the idea of erecting hard walls, firewalls, and strong protection on the border of a network is increasingly invalidated. And this is largely because the vulnerabilities uh, of the network are increasingly inside the network. Uh, and there's many ways that uh, new technologies are creating tunnels and vulnerabilities that puncture through uh, the traditional walls that have been used uh, for protecting cybersecurity infrastructure. Uh, this is to say that essentially um, the internet is uh, has connections both inside the network uh, that can potentially tunnel through firewalls, but potentially can bypass them, which is that we all increasingly carry around mobile devices with uh, often autonomous connections that can then also provide entries into allied networks that we're connecting to. So the challenges are increasingly multidimensional uh, and complex. Uh, the ways that we can address protecting uh, infrastructure now has to encompass not only protecting endpoints, uh, but protecting the servers, uh, also addressing cloud uh, systems and access, and also monitoring uh, traffic, both on networks and with the internet. So metaphorically, if we were to think of the modern challenge as a airport security problem. We have uh, masses of people, many millions of people coming through every second in some cases uh, that need to be checked efficiently. Um, people, of course, are using networks to do important work and we need to, as much as possible, make that process efficient. Uh, indeed, there's many unusual exceptions associated with uh, people who are using the internet in unusual ways, uh, but may be connected to their role or their job. Uh, and it's important that we allow them to continue to do that important work uh, while still protecting um, the networks and infrastructure from people who may be trying to circumvent security. So indeed, data analytics is one of the great hopes of addressing the shortfalls of the castle and moat paradigm, which is to use data analysis to find these hidden threats and to disassociate real uh, uh, uses of the internet from anomalous uh, threats that, have, that are showing up on the network. And so cybersecurity data science offers a set of methods uh, for addressing um, some of the challenges of big data 
uh, analytics for cybersecurity. And so these include data that's coming in at great volume and speed, um, data sources that are disconnected and fragmented, often lacking a context for users and devices and their situation and interaction with the network, a limited security staff who can only follow up on so many alerts and incidents per day, and then multiple systems that are creating uh, many alerts in typical security, uh, security operations uh, centers and environments. So cybersecurity data science as an emerging discipline uh, uh, addresses a lot of these challenges by proposing to use data science methods uh, to address cybersecurity challenges. So this includes uh, ways of improving data engineering for cybersecurity, reducing data volumes, uh, to produce focused discovery and detection, which creates targeted alerts, uh, to set up automated models, and to optimize resources, uh, to optimize the time uh, and attention of cybersecurity defenders. This brings us to our first major challenge in preparing for real-time data analytics for cybersecurity, which is the technology, namely data engineering challenges. Uh, prior to explaining some of these challenges, I'll just briefly uh, cover some of the main data sources associated with cybersecurity analytics. These include log files, network flow data, and data coming out of identity and access management systems, uh, as well as physical security systems, endpoint monitoring, packet capture, and seams. Now, uh, the discussion about cybersecurity data can be very abstract. So in order to make it concrete, I will use the metaphor of Legos, which is we can think of a discrete piece of cybersecurity data as something like an IP address, a timestamp or user ID or a destination port. And that would be a single piece or, or element of data. Now, uh, a data source such as a log file has several uh, pieces of these data in composite. And when we want to assemble a picture of user or device behavior, we combine several sources together, which give us an aggregate picture of the traffic and activities that are going on on a network. And from these, using analytics, we can build up things like a user behavioral profile to understand how users are interacting with the network and internet over time. Now, this creates, of course, a massive amount of data and a large amount of uh, different types of data that are coming at a very high speed and in irregular uh, patterns as well. So over time, we have uh, you know ups and downs of huge amounts of data that are streaming uh, that need to be collected and managed. Uh, in aggregate, if we think about the Legos, this amounts to a huge pile of Legos being dumped every second that need to be sorted and managed. The three key challenges are those associated with big data, which are very large volumes of data, uh, sometimes uh, terabytes or petabytes uh, per day for some organization, uh, the high speed that this data is coming in, and the many different sources of data that need to be uh, aggregated, transformed, and integrated. So we can think of three main challenges, uh, including processing volume, uh, preparing uh, and doing and conducting real-time analytics, and structuring and integrating varieties of different types of data. When we dig a bit deeper into the engineering challenges that are associated, there are problems of scalability, which is scaling the systems for real-time data, developing approaches for fault tolerance, which is uh, finding ways to uh, deal with errors that can occur as these large data come, uh, amounts of data come in, uh, creating models and having those models uh, respond to both real-time data and uh, in some cases also batch data in, in the same context and also dealing with issues of timing, which is sometimes data comes in late and needs to be rationalized. So from this large pile of Legos, we can certainly 
take an approach of using uh, a number of the big data technologies that have come out over the last decade, uh, principally, of course, the Apache, Apache Hadoop ecosystem and a number of associated tools that allow us to rationalize, manage, and uh, store and transform data at, at large volumes and speeds. And for some of the best practices uh, associated with big data management, I can uh, refer you to a very uh, fine white paper on this topic about governing and managing big data. And so there's a number of different elements towards uh, managing big data and, and, and data lake architectures, uh, which include cleaning, uh, uh, and uh, dealing with issues of data quality as well as governance and securing that data. Ultimately, what we'd like to, to achieve, again, in the LEGO context is to have a very organized uh, understanding of the types of data we're dealing with and the ability to access it and integrate it uh, at will. Now, uh, essentially, what we're attempting to do is to uh, take unstructured, chaotic, high-speed data and to uh, integrate it and transform it uh, to address issues of quality and issues of uh, uh, validation at very high speeds in order to bring it forth so that it can be analyzed very quickly. Um, and uh, for a wonderful case study on how this is done, I would like to refer you to uh, a uh, written up case study also available as a, a presentation on YouTube concerning uh, what was done for the New York City Cyber Command uh, Department uh, in order to protect New York City's cyber infrastructure using the Google Cloud Platform. I think this is very instructive because uh, some of the large tech companies, Google in particular, have created uh, mechanisms for managing large amounts of data at volume and velocity. Uh, uh, for their own products and for their for their own services, which they've now made available uh, in terms of creating platforms available for others to use. So the Google Cloud platform benefits from over 15 years of uh, research and development that Google's done to improve its own products and services that are now available to enterprise uh, uh, customers that wish to uh, also manage large uh, sets of data at scale and at speed, such as for the problem of cybersecurity real-time analytics. So some of these uh, problems, I think, are beyond the scope of what we can cover today. But just to give you an example, uh, there's an issue of uh, processing different uh, data pipelines that are coming in at great speed. Uh, and data that needs to be collected and aggregated at great speed. And there's a problem of latency. Some data will come in before other types of data. And so there needs to be an ability uh, at a very high speed to uh, match data that may be coming in at uneven timestamps and to integrate it to make very quick decisions about uh, data that may be uh, coming in late due to latency. Uh, there may be an older event uh, that comes in uh, before a newer event, and those need to be rationalized using timestamps and a number of mechanisms. Uh, so uh, Google Cloud Platform has uh, a, a wide variety of tools to address all of these engineering problems, uh, including real-time transformations, uh, uh, doing event time windowing, uh, which is that uh, as different events come in through time windows, they need to be matched up and analyzed uh, according to uh, the recency of the events. Um, there are issues uh, really regarding lateness and validity of the data. So there needs to be a strong uh, validation of the data very quickly. And uh, as I mentioned previously, there needs to be a way to handle data coming in late. And then, uh, there needs to be a way to accumulate that data and present it quickly, for instance, uh, to uh, cybersecurity operators or to machine learning models, as the case may be, at a very rapid speed, uh, again, and also at great scale. So um, these challenges, the uh, data engineering challenges, 
uh, have been, uh, uh, there's been major advances made over the last decade because of the large uh, technology firms, uh, Google as being a very great example. Um, however, this then uh, does not get us off the hook, which is in order to prepare for real-time cybersecurity analytics, we also need to conduct uh, data science in order to understand what's going on in this data to create models for detection, uh, for alerting, and for remediation. In essence, when we'd like to uh, process cybersecurity data in order to identify and resolve uh, cybersecurity incidents, it's, uh, it's a staged process in which we first uh, ingest and integrate and transform data at very large scales uh, and at speed. Uh, that data is then needs to be enriched with some context about what's going on. Who are the users? What are the devices? Um, what is the context of the usage? And is it unusual or is it expected? Uh, from there, uh, analytics can be conducted, both statistical analysis and machine learning, uh, unsupervised and supervised machine learning, to provide contextual alerts to disassociate unexpected but normal events from uh, events that look to be a genuine security incident. And then to present alerts and um, incidents and oversight to cybersecurity investigators, analysts, and managers. The difficult thing here is to develop an understanding of context, and that's where data science in particular provides value, uh, which is uh, there are genuine questions about what do we mean when we say a cybersecurity user? Well, that can mean many different things, uh, depending on how we track and associate data about uh, users' activities, uh, which is that there's uh, many ways that users show up on a network uh, according to their interactions with devices, their use of an IP address, their auth authentication events, and how they connect to subsequent networks and devices, uh, both on their local network and through the internet. And increasingly, as we have mobile devices and cloud-based services, this topic can become very muddled. So essentially, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to prepare for real-time analytics prior to operationalizing the engineering aspects of, uh, of the solution. And that involves uh, conducting uh, integrated analytics uh, on retrospective data, uh, to conducting forensic analysis of uh, backwards-looking cybersecurity data to develop pictures and understandings and models of how users are interacting with a network and devices so that we can create appropriate alerts. Uh, and so for this, I can refer to the SAS analytics process, which is a, a staged process of uh, investigating uh, data, preparing uh, models, and preparing uh, under, uh, data sets, uh, dealing with data quality, uh, leading up to a, a staged model uh, and testing of the model, implementation of models, and then uh, the results that come out of models, such as alerts of a cybersecurity incident, uh, which we can then track and analyze and evaluate over time. Uh, in a bit more detail, particular to cybersecurity analytics, uh, what we're talking about is a staged process involving first exploration and insights of standing data in batch, so retrospective data, uh, which we use to prepare uh, integrated and uh, formatted data sets, which we then can put forward to uh, prospective models for testing and analysis, and that those models uh, allow us to detect patterns, which we can then put forward and test in operation. Now, in order to stage this, there's an important distinction to be made architecturally when we're managing data between uh, having a batch data repository, a large set of standing data that looks uh, over time, which we can use to conduct exploration and discovery to create and test models from the operational big uh, data uh, real-time analytics layer. 
So uh, it's important to note that uh, one is oriented towards uh, storing and analyzing large sets of data from the perspective of the data scientist to develop models. Once those models are developed, they're then instantiated and embedded uh, and influence the types of data that are chosen for uh, implementation in uh, real-time big data engineering solutions and that there is a relationship between the two as the results come in from operational and analytics um, there may be feedback that leads to revision of the models or may give the data scientists indications of something they need to add to the data or improve in the models uh, so during the process of discovery, data scientists need to uh, apply a very large toolkit of different methods in order to understand and rationalize uh, cybersecurity data and investigate the phenomenon that is uh, going on uh, under this surface uh, inside this data. So one of them, of course, is to understand uh, what are the natural categories. For instance, uh, what are the different types of users that are uh, interacting with the network devices and the internet? That is to say, and it's been my experience, that not all users are the same. Some are very technically sophisticated users who are, uh, who are conducting uh, uh, large amounts of transactions through the internet. They're dealing with large sets of data connecting to many different computers. And there's other users who are less sophisticated and may not be on the computer very often. There's essentially a Pareto principle, uh, which I've seen on many different corporate networks across the globe by which 20% uh, of the users typically generate 80% of the traffic data and activities. And it's beneficial if we can understand uh, who these users are and categorize them so that they're marked differently than the users who are using the internet infrequently. Because in each case, it's a lot easier to detect anomalies if uh, users are uh, applied to their peer group is to say um, a user that doesn't use the uh, their computer more than five hours a week typically over the last year if they're suddenly on 24 hours a day and are downloading terabytes of data it's clearly an anomaly whereas a systems administrator who may do this as part of their work should be labeled as such so we are not uh, bothered uh, when we see that type of activity so there's an interaction between uh, both the uh, conduct of unsupervised uh, machine learning, which is developing categories and understanding patterns in large sets of data, uh, which allow us to uh, put forward hypothetical categories, which we can oper operationalize, for instance, in supervised or predictive machine learning. And as we get results, for instance, alerts and anomalies that come from those uh, models, we can then use that to tune and refine our understandings of categories and the data sets that underlie those models. Uh, another uh, example of a data science methodology that is very important for cybersecurity is that of uh, process mining, which is understanding the interactions and transactions that occur over time on networks and with devices uh, using uh, information about users, IP addresses, and the key entities that uh, are accessing networks. And for this, I can recommend uh, a very good book from uh, a Dutch academic called Process Mining, which uh, gives a lot of examples of uh, that the methods that can be used to gain an understanding of uh, processes over time which can, in the case of cybersecurity, be applied to develop uh, an understanding of the different entities uh, that are interacting uh, in a network and how we might track them and how we might uh, store the appropriate data and analyze the data associated with those entities. Now, uh, once this work is done, uh, uh, you can then use uh, tools such as, for example, SAS's event stream processing uh, to uh, instantiate models, uh, e either on an endpoint, for instance, on a device, or to analyze data centrally on a server. Essentially, uh, what we're talking about is that uh, analytics models, uh, such as a machine learning model, is made itself of data. 
it's an active data vehicle. Using our Lego example, it's one of those very complicated technique Lego sets that may actually have a motor and do very interesting things. Uh, but it's itself composed of data and it requires uh, research and some amount of uh, uh, effort to study the phenomenon that we want to create a model for in order to, uh, to understand and, and implement that model. So this brings us to the last topic, which is um, the organizational aspects of, of uh, implementing real-time analytic solutions for cybersecurity. We've uh, reviewed how data uh, can be collected and stored and how uh, we then need to analyze that data in order to create models. Uh, which allows us to then create a real-time model for, for instance, detecting cybersecurity incidents, um, but that this then needs to be implemented to fit into an organizational process. So for cybersecurity, that often means to fit into a security operations center so that investigators, analysts, and managers can then respond to alerts and follow up on them. And in some cases, they may want to create automated models that will automate those processes. So for this, uh, what essentially we want is, again, a data lake architecture, which um, supports both batch storage for the process of discovery and exploration for data scientists to continually discover potential new events and incidents, and the operational architecture that throughputs uh, rapid uh, high-speed data uh, through transformation processes using data engineering so that it's uh, uh, then pushed into analytics models that can then assist, in, assist investigators uh, or in some cases remediate automatically. Now, um, there's a, a lot of uh, recent uh, writing and thought that's been put into this. And one of the newer perspectives is that ideally, in order to operationalize these solutions, organizations need to uh, to put in place an opera operationalization um, analytics life cycle, which includes a combination of three major functions, which is data ops, model ops, and dev ops. The data ops being associated with data engineering, as we covered uh, at the beginning of this presentation. The model ops covering the data science work that needs to be done, which we covered in the last section. And then the dev ops, which is the uh, management of the deployment of models and the monitoring of those models, and ultimately the exposure of those models to end users in an organization so that they can, uh, so that they are practical practical and can be followed up upon. So um, there's some articles I've, I've put in here, uh, links to more information on this, uh, this perspective on operationalizing the analytics lifecycle through these three functions. Um, essentially, again, using the example of SAS's event stream processing, um, a technology such as SAS ESP supports this, which is that it supports both uh, the investigation, exploration, and discovery, and then the operationalization of models in, in an analytics lifecycle. Ultimately, uh, when the solutions, the models are deployed, uh, we then want it to fit into a functional architecture in the organization, which is a staged process of high-speed data ingestion, transformation, uh, addressing data quality. Uh, that data is then pushed forward to a set of analytical models that allow us to make quick decisions, often automated, uh, which then produces results, uh, in particular alerts concerning incidents on cybersecurity that are then pushed forward to investigators and analysts. So at a high level, what we're talking is, is a bit of a cyborg architecture, which is the integration of staged technologies that interact with um, functional roles in the organization focused on cybersecurity. So uh, this brings us to the conclusion. And in summary, uh, what we've covered today has been to address uh, cybersecurity challenges, which is that uh, there uh, is a great hope concerning cybersecurity analytics. However, there are challenges that are created by the volume of velocity and variety of data that we must manage in order to uh, realize the promise of cybersecurity analytics. 
uh, and in particular, uh, there are data engineering challenges at a low level, uh, dealing with latency, fault tolerance, scalability, and that over the last decade, uh, uh, the large tech firms such as Google with Google Cloud Platform have addressed many of these, uh, these issues through very sophisticated uh, cloud-based data engineering mechanisms. And that uh, a great example of this is available through the case study of the New York City Cyber Command uh, Department. And that ultimately when these solutions are deployed, it, uh, it creates a, uh, a, a circular cybersecurity analytics lifecycle, which is a continual improvement of cybersecurity detection models um, that are then put into production, which improve data engineering, which then go to models, which then feed forward to alerts, which are assessed, and that this is a continual process. We also covered SAS event stream processing as an example of a type of technology that can help uh, assist and mediate this analytics lifecycle process of both discovery and detection. And uh, we discussed in depth a number of the different uh, uh, perspectives of cybersecurity data science as a discipline in order to uh, create models and analyze data. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and time today. Uh, it was a great honor to present to you. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't be in Warsaw myself. Uh, and I look forward to interacting with you should you have questions or wish to follow up. I'd be very happy to talk at more length on this uh, and to talk about my research and uh, 